Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Fix This House. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to apply textures around your windows easily. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So this video is gonna consist of two parts. The very first part is what I'm doing right now is surface preparation and dropping off the area, which is very important, which I highly suggest you watch. But if you don't wanna watch through this and go straight to the texture spraying, just go straight to timestamp five minutes and 39 seconds in. So right now I'm applying a two and a half inch masking tape around my window frame. This is very important that it actually hangs over the frame and you leave a little bit exposed because this is going to be one of the key tips and tricks that I do whenever I drop off around my windows for preparation. When you apply the plastic around this thing, it is easier to put along the edges rather than cutting to fit that plastic, which I'll show you in a bit. So just make sure that you mask off every single one of the edges. Now this is where the part that makes it easy, that's why you leave the little bit of overhang on the masking tape, is you apply the plastic and just let it stick on the edge like that and it's easily installed rather than just cutting to fit the plastic and trying to make it work. This is a by far one of my key tips and tricks that I, I like to do whenever I prepare and drop off the windows or anything around areas that I wanna put around plastic drop. I'm also applying masking tape uh, diagonally on each side of the windows. This helps it so that you can have extra strength on your plastic and drop because the when you're applying texture, there's gonna be air that's blowing out and this will help hold the plastic cover. And make sure that you tape off any holes. As you can see here, my daughter put a hole on there, so make sure that you fix any um, plastic barriers that you might have. I like to use this sanding sponge which is very versatile and contours to the surface area and then this 120 grit sandpaper from my orbital sander and then I use a lot of water using this mister so make sure that you water down whenever you're sanding because it controls the dust and it's very helpful. It's gonna get very dusty. Now I like to focus a lot on these edges around the windows I like to tackle the edges of the windows. I like to make it nice and square and sharp edges. So I focus a lot more on these edges so to make it very nice along the way. Joint compound on the drywall. This is where I focus on just so that I can make it feathered and nice. So after sanding for a while and spraying at the same time, it does uh, create buildup on your sandpaper just like what you see here and it pretty much is, becomes useless. So what I like to do is just make sure that you bring extra grit sandpaper so that you can replace that and it doesn't interfere with your uh, project. There you go. We're make sure that you use your hands to feel for any imperfections and you missed, keep commisting along the way to control the dust. So like what I mentioned here, I like to focus on the edges to make it nice and square. Make sure that you pay attention to these areas and that you feel for it while you're sanding. These are the areas that I like to pay very close attention to so that when you, after you finish texturing, it does look nice. One key trick, use this paintbrush so that you can pretty much take off all that excess dust that you just sanded off so that you can have a nice clean surface preparation for spraying. Mm -hmm. Look at those edges, look sharp. So sharp, ah, so sharp. So make sure you take your time to make it look good guys. Make sure you take your time sanding, use the brush, smooth it out, and it will turn out real well for texture. Prep work is always the hardest, but it always pays off if you do it and take your time. Key tip I like to do is to feel the surface with my hands, because your hands will feel everything. Um, if there's an imperfection, a slight hump a slight dip you know where it's gonna be at so always feel don't be afraid to take off the gloves use your bare hands and feel for those spots that's how you'll know if your surface is nice and smooth so don't be afraid to get dirty so one last thing before you start spraying is make sure that you clean the surface because it is full of dust from when you started sanding what i like to use is a microfiber towel um, sometimes you need to wet this to take off all that dust. Pay attention to that because this having a clean surface with, will allow the texture to adhere better. All you got to do is lightly wipe it off, take off all that excess dust, 
and this will help ad help that texture adhere. I didn't have a flathead screwdriver. Here's a key trick that I like to do is I just use my four inch knife to unscrew all those outlet covers. And at the same time, since it's open, make sure you, you um, scrape along those edges so that you can make sure that it is nice and feathered in, nice and smooth. Just be very careful. Don't do this while the power is on. You might accidentally shock yourself. Just make sure you turn off the power from the breaker. And this is actually a great time for you to mask off those outlets. I use flip flops whenever I go in and out so that I, can, I don't track any dust around the house. Got here is a bucket of water, a bucket of joint compound, paint mixer right here, and a drill. The consistency that we're going for is a yogurt-like texture. So we're gonna just gonna add a little bit of water at a time. Again, don't put too much water. So a little bit at a time there. Then let's go mix it. So here's a little trick, right, when you're done using this, stir it in the, the water right here. Easy way, clean up your paint mixer. The texture sprayer today that I'm going to be using is this one. It has three different types of nozzle. I made a separate video on this air sprayer, so I'll leave it on the link on the top right, right there for you guys to watch that video. But I'm going to be using my favorite, the small setting, the small nozzle. And yeah, I got a 25 foot hose, air hose, quarter inch. And then I have this small pancake air compressor that I'm going to keep um, to air pressure up to 100 PSI to keep it and maintain it that way. And that's how it should be. Then I'm going to go and load this up and let's go start spraying. So all the materials and all the tools that I use in this video, I'll leave it on the description down below. So make to make it easier for you to find all the materials. So now it's time to load the hopper, take your mixture and then just pour it inside your hopper. Be very careful. Uh, make sure that that uh, stopping guard from the hopper is facing towards you. Now what I like to do before I spray is I like to test spray on, on the surface area. Make sure that you figure out the settings on your spray gun on which texture style that you like. I like the very, very small um, texture style uh, for orange, which you call orange peel. I don't like the big, big textures. I like it nice and fine. Now here you go. You see how the hopper, I'm holding it right there. What This is what I really like about this uh, hopper and spray gun is that it has that handle so you can spray on high surfaces. As you can see, I'm holding it like there and it doesn't spill over. So again, make sure that you focus on all those areas, focus on the edges first, and then just continue along the rest of the perimeter of each window. Here is the spraying of the bottom of the windows. As you can see, the texture is a nice orange peel texture. If you're not into this, then um, this spray gun also has different types of uh, nozzles that you can choose. So that you can have bigger types but again like what i said i like very fine small little textures on my uh, wall now here's the area of my wall where i pretty much uh, feathered onto my existing texture i like to feather in the texture onto the already existing textured wall Here's the key trick to that. So just make sure that you spray over it just a little bit and feather out so that you can have a nice transition to whatever um, textured wall that you have. So it doesn't look so obvious that you had new textured put in. So that's pretty much it. Just then do a very good cleanup. And that's this is what it looks like a day later. Everything is nice and dry very nice and you can see how the texture looks it is the way that i really like it is that orange peel little textures and it is nice and dry sharp on those corners that's why i always tell you make sure that you take your time whenever you're tackling these corners to make it nice and square have those 90 degree 
angles so again i like to keep the drop here because i'm not done yet i am going to be painting this so this will save me time and after that i will cut it off with a box knife so that it doesn't so that the plastic doesn't go with the texture when i peel it off okay so that's pretty much it make sure that you feel across it make sure it looks nice and good and you can see here it is nice and feathered in and blended it with the old texture once again friends thanks so much for tuning in once again if you find value to this video please give this video a big thumbs up subscribe and press that notification bell so you can always be in tune on diys and how-to videos that i do within this channel and the next stop for this project is paint so stay tuned